Alright, so what do we have next? Next we have the main menu. That menu is very useful, very customizable. This is the same menu as if you were going to go in your area right here, right click, edit menu, and the same window will pop up. You can see it's the exact same window. That's again two different ways to get there. So what does it do? Uh, we can see right here all the menus that we have and we can also see them right here. This show item this is checked which means it'll be shown. If it's not checked it will not be shown and of course it depends also if we have items inside of these menus that's what we'll say if it's shown or not. But let's say we don't want to show the access accessories anymore. Here it is you can see the accessories right there. Now if I click this go back to applications and accessories are now gone. Again, click on this, go back here, and there are accessories again. This is very customizable if you want to limit uh, applications to certain users. If you have a kid or a child that you know are, isn't allowed to use Firefox or isn't allowed to use the internet, you can go ahead and disable the internet here, and that it can't get to the actual internet applications very easily. If you don't want them to play games, you can disable that, and again, games are gone. And of course, you have to be um, root user to actually set these up. So if they want to try and put it back on, they can't because they need the password to the computer. And if you have the password, they suck. <laughs> They're pretty much locked out. Now, what else can you do in here? Uh, you can actually make your own little customizations. Let's go ahead and start it. Uh, I'm going to click on Applications, do New Menu. And we're going to name it, I'm going to do something. Some sort of folder. I don't know what I'm naming it, but something. You can name it whatever you want. You can just customize a whole set. And there it is right here, something. Now you won't see it in the applications yet because we don't have anything in here in the items. But once we add something, we'll see it in the menu up here. Let's go ahead and add uh, Firefox again. We're very used to Firefox. Firefox and Firefox. And you can of course change your icon by clicking there and finding any application or any icon that you would like. I don't want to go ahead and look for the whole system for Firefox. I'm just going to give a random icon like that. <coughs> and there it is, the Firefox icon, and now here it is, something, Firefox. And that's basically how that works. And of course you can delete it, just highlight and applications, and go to your something folder, and delete. Notice how this side, you don't edit anything on this side. This is just to direct where you are. This is the area where you actually edit. This is uh, sort of where you are now area. So you can't edit anything from here. Of course you can close it like that to kind of give you some space. You can do the system as well. The places you can't do because there's nothing much to do there. And that's basically how you do the menus. Next we have the mouse. The mouse is very simple like every other application. Uh, very customizable. If you're left handed, if you're right handed. To locate the pointer, basically when this is enabled, if you press control, you will see a little pointer icon or pointer thing come up and say here I am. Uh, with a pointer speed, you can change the speed of the pointer. Uh, yes, it's not very comfortable. Just make it. This is to com to make it comfortable for you. Drag and drop, trust hold, and double click timeout. This is for double clicking. How fast you have to double click to actually open a file. Next is accessibility. We would have been here uh, triggering second click by holding primary button and full click. Uh, these will be enabled. If you enable it right now, it'll tell you that you have to re-log in or restart or log out, log back in. To enable it. I'm not going to enable it because I do not need it, but for you, you probably will if you do need it. Touchpad is very, very cool. Um, right now, I have two finger scrolling enabled and enable so horizontal. What this does is if I disable this and I go into some window somewhere that has a scroll bar, I cannot scroll. Oops. Okay, there, anyway. I can't scroll by using my, my um, touchpad. The very right you're able to scroll, I'm actually touching it right now but if I enable edge scrolling and I click on this again now I can scroll the whole page with that same very corner we can do horizontal as well if there is a way let me see if I can make it small enough no it's just going to rearrange itself see now we have horizontal it's very bad, but horizontal and it's enabled and I can actually scroll horizontal without actually touching the bar <clears throat> and the two finger is really cool. You don't have to actually go to the very edge of your trackpad. Just put two fingers on your trackpad and scroll up and down. It's simple as that. 
you have to have them spaced out. It's a cool, new, cool little feature. And that's how that works. Next on the list, we have the network connections. These are all the network connections on the computer. Uh, this is the wired. Uh, anytime you're connecting to a wire, this will show up. Right now, I haven't actually used it. The wireless, I'm using it right now. Uh, this is to set up any wireless. Any wireless that you've connected to or saved will be shown in this list and will tell you when you last used it. Uh, you can actually go into it and edit. You need to be local user or you have to be root user to use it. You can do it to available to all users. Apply. You have to put in your password. Uh, you can set up uh, manually set up anything from your wireless security passcode to your DHCP, IPv6 settings, and so on. Mobile broadband, I will show you in another episode how to set it up. It's very simple. It took me two minutes to set up. No drivers required. Um, this is where this will show. VPN, uh, sec like a secure sort of connection is in this area. And uh, DSL is in this one. Now next we have the network proxy. This is basically for um, connecting to the internet through a proxy. Right now I'm just going to do a direct connection. Um, you can do it manual by using a certain uh, URL or HTTP. You can do a secure HTTP, you can do a file transfer FTP, or a SOX host. This is for security's sake. It goes around, um, let's say, your, your default gateway through your um, IP provider <clears throat> and I go to a certain network that you direct. This is more advanced area, you don't really need to do this. It'll, your internet will work directly out of the box. This is just for more advanced, uh, more like corporate areas. I'm just going to leave it like that and go ahead. You can also reset it if you mess something up, you reset it and then go back to normal and close. Afterwards, we have the Palm OS devices. This is uh, simply to set up a synchronization with your Palm OS or basically Palm Pilots. It'll contact and calendar and all that stuff and notes will be synchronized. We have power management. We have three tabs. AC power, battery, general. You will not need this if you are on a regular computer, but if you're on a laptop, it's perfect. It has power saving abilities at the moment by default. It spins down the hard disk, reduces backlight, and dims display. You can actually set up the buttons. Uh, what happens when my lid closes? Suspend. You can do nothing. So if you close your lid, it stays on. You don't like go to suspend or turn off. You can actually make it shut down, and so on. In general, what happens when you press the power button? You can let it ask you what to do. You can automatically shut down or suspend, etc. And suspend button. What you want it to do? You can show the icon. Never, always, and anything in between. Or of course, make defaults. Of course, you need a password for that system stuff. Afterwards we have preferred applications. In this area, uh, this is just to configure standard applications to if you click on a link in AIM or if you click on an HTML file, what should I open with? I have Google Chrome and Firefox. I keep it in Firefox. You can make a custom by command line um, or terminal application or any application just run it in here. I'm gonna keep it in Firefox. We can do the same for the mail reader, we can do it for a music player, a multi multimedia player, at the GNOME terminal, accessibilities, we've been here before, and so on. That's just to set up what applications open when with what. Next we have the remote desktop, very simple to use if you're on the same network. All you have to do is allow users to view your desktop. You can set up a security. You have to, you can do it automatically by configuring the network automatically to accept connections. So anytime someone tries to connect to see your um, desktop, it'll do it automatically. You can do, um, you can say you must confirm each access to this machine. You can do require user password. Actually, this down here is the network automatically to accept connections, so you can actually enable from the outside people to log in or to you see your screen. And we have always display an icon, only display when someone's connected, never display an icon. And that's it for this area. I'm going to go ahead and continue with the rest of the applications in the next video.